Okay, let's get this party started. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here for EdChat Interactive. And thank you all for coming on time or early. I expect we'll, we'll have quite a few more people joining us over the next five or 10 minutes. Uh, tonight on EdChat Interactive, part of our serious play conference series, uh, we're having Tammy Schrader, who's going to be talking about running a game jam. And, uh, and immediately following the Edge, the Edge Chat Interactive, we're, we're going to be having a, a Twitter chat, the Games for Ed Twitter chat, which will be talking about the same, the same topic. Let me spend just a, a second or a few minutes on, um, on Edge Chat Interactive. Uh, first of all, you, you understand that we like to bring together educators who are really doing interesting things to share them with other educators. And we want to do that in a format that's different from the standard webinar. We want to do that in a way that's much more conducive to learning uh, with more interactivity, more reflection, and more participation. So let me go over how we intend to do that tonight. So the first thing is you'll notice underneath your avatars there are two buttons. One is the raised hand button and the other is the ask button. There's going to be times during the session where we ask for volunteers to come up and uh, ask questions of Tammy or share their experience or whatever. So when you're willing to come up, you're going to up on stage and, and discuss something with Tammy. Um, <coughs> you'll click the raise hand button. I'll see that and then I know that you're willing to come up. Second, if you have a question and if you click on the ask button, uh, you can ask a question. Uh, the ask button gives a question to me and then if it's a technical question, I can answer it. If it's a question for Tammy, then I can pass it along to Tammy and she can answer it. So those first two ways of interacting are when we ask for people to come up on stage and then uh, for you to ask a question clicking the ask button. Now the third way of interacting um, happens through IM, uh, what we call a back channel. If you move your avatar or move your cursor over your video avatar, you see that there's a five item menu, uh, one of which is IM. I'd like to, you to click on that menu right now. And um, maybe that, well, that'll bring up a text dialog box where you can uh, text each other and text to Tammy. Um, maybe this is a good time for you to type in uh, one of your favorite games. You know, introduce yourself, where are you from, what do you do, and what's one of your favorite games. Now, as I've said in other sessions, the one person who can't see what you're texting is me, but Tammy can. So she can respond to it. Um, and she can, you know, list her favorite game also in, in, in that dialog box. So that's the third way of interacting is through IM. And then the fourth way of interacting, um, the, sorry, the, uh, the fourth way of interacting is, <clears throat> um, is through clicking on the avatar of another person. Um, and you can have a video chat with that other person. Now, if we may be doing that a couple times during the session. But for example, um, it might be an interesting discussion because I know a lot of you probably love paying taxes. Um, it may be a good discussion to say, which is more fun, pay, uh, paying taxes or playing games? Uh, but we're going to skip that for right now because we're going to, because uh, Tammy has a lot of material to go over. And we want to give her a chance, we give you all a chance to interact with her. So um, I do also, uh, let me just, um, somebody just texted me and I'm looking for the URL. Um, oops, uh, sorry, and I just texted the wrong person. So I just want to text them the URL. Um, so uh, we, we have these on an ongoing basis. Next week, we're having another in our series for Serious Play with Patrick Saria. He's, um, he's been a music teacher, um, and he's developed music games which unite kids uh, of all different types. And so he's going to be uh, covering how to use Eurythmics or games based on Eurythmics, which is a, a type of a music way of educating in order to uh, propel education and bring kids together. So that's next week. And then the first week of June, uh, we're going to have uh, Kenneth Bibbins. He's going to be talking on using games to overcome tra traumatic events, because we know that when there's hurricanes or violence, 
um, or when kids are moving from place to place, that, that materially affects their performance in life and in schools. Um, but interestingly enough, games can help them overcome those traumatic events and get back on a stable track. So he's going to be covering um, some games. And then after the series play series, we're going to be starting in late June with our FETC series, which is, which is going to start um, oh, probably around June 15th. And there'll be more, more on that a little bit later. So um, let me just, you know, before I actually bring uh, Tammy up here, because it just you know, introduce her a little bit. Um, she's, she's on the science assessment leadership team in Oregon. Uh, she works at a, uh, uh, an, educate, an educational services service district in Eastern Oregon, which consists of 39 districts, and she created the, um, a game jam for the uh, 39 districts. And she was a U.S. Department of Education teacher fellow. Before she actually goes into the game jams, though, uh, she, she actually um, she actually sent a video of kids responding to how they like the game jam. So I'd like to play that video so you can get a taste of how kids uh, relate to game jams. So. So I guess uh, a lot happens when you bring together a, a, a Hi, lot of guys yeah. and, and a couple girls, right? <laughs> there were actually quite a few girls there, just not on that team. You saw Sydney sitting there with them, but yeah. So, um, so what was it like being a, a, a White House fellow? What was that? Um, so being a Department of Education and, and White House fellow was extremely interesting. Uh, so I had been teaching for, I think, about 10 years for the Department of Ed, and they said, hey, we're looking for teachers to, you know, collaborate with us on education policy, and I have a lot of opinions about education policy and how that fits in my classroom. So uh, I applied, and then the next thing you know, I was sitting back with the Department of, of Education. Um, and because of those connections, and I, I always say the most powerful thing wasn't that we were connected to the department and to the White House. We were actually connected to each other, and we're all very passionate people. And that's how I actually uh, met Dr. Antero Garcia, who does a lot of gaming work uh, out of Boulder in higher ed. And so he and I started just kind of conversing about how I use it in seventh grade. And just great conversations happen, and you just get a lot of rich learning with people who have such varied backgrounds. I imagine that's a little bit similar to how the kids feel when they do a game jam, right? Oh, ab I think so. And what was great about uh, the game jam, and I'll talk about this, was just we invited anybody and everybody. So kids could have experience or kids could have no experience, and it could just be something fun they wanted to do for an evening with a bunch of their colleagues. So we got a variety of, of expertise and a variety of interest. Mm -hmm. Well, let me get out of your way and get your slides up. Mitch, am I supposed to be able to see it? There they are. Okay. <laughs> am I supposed to be able to see the slide? So I just want to make sure, did you see the slides when they came up? I did not. You did not? Okay. I did, um, not. I just I did have, have them up. I'm going to um, I'm gonna stop my broadcast again, and I'll bring them up. Let me, let me see what's going on. Okay. Thanks, Mitch.
So you didn't see them that time either? Mm -mm. And so this time now, actually, mm -hmm. okay. Before um, the screen went black, this time okay. nothing happened. I can, yeah. Okay, so so um, I hate to say this, but I'm going to bring you back down. Um, I'm going to okay. put the slides in the other window, see if you can see okay. them, and then I'll bring you back up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now, first of all, Tammy, since you've got your, the text box here, can you just text me to see if, if you can see the slides, because they should be up. And then for everybody else, can you click on the raise hand button um, if, you can see the, if you can see the slides? Okay, so I know at least one person can see the slides. Uh, Tammy, uh, uh, can you see the slides? Okay, everybody else, um, so I see that there's a bunch of you who can see the slides, good, but Tammy, you can't, right, or, you, or can you? So let me, um, let me just come down for a second and let me just chat with Tammy, sorry. Uh, technical problems. Okay, well, Tammy is refreshing her screen and she'll be right back up. Um, sorry, I guess technical technical things happening. That's why we, um, but we did tr try this earlier and it worked then. <coughs> so we'll, we'll see. Uh, <coughs> so um, I guess one thing that we could do is those of you who have specific questions that you want to see, um, if you can click on that ask button and ask the, you know, feel free to ask questions and I'll pass them to Tammy when she comes back. In the meantime, let me see, she may have come back. And so let me, let me stop my broadcast and let me see if I can, if I can talk to her. One second. Sorry. Okay, so Tammy's back in the house. Something or other happened on her machine. She can't see the slides, but she has printouts of them. But since you all can see the slides, and she has copies of the slides, she's going to speak from her copies, and she'll tell me to advance them. So let me bring, uh, without further ado, uh, we're, we're, now gonna, we're now going to learn how well Tammy can tap dance. So let's go. So good evening, and I apologize for the late start. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about our hackathon. And the first thing I want you to know is, so I'm Tammy Schrader. I'm the science computer science uh, coordinator at ESD 101. And actually, I'm in Washington State um, on the east side, so a little bit further north. Um, so 
go ahead and Mitch, if you want to advance the slide, which is hilarious because I can't see if you are or not. So what we did was we threw what we call a hackathon and we named it the Spokeathon because we're from Spokane and we serve the Spokane region. So even though we invited all the districts, it was the event was going to happen in downtown Spokane because some of our districts are actually two and a half hours from us uh, and we needed a central location. So uh, the following slide is going to show you where we held it. There was a, an old historic building downtown that has a company in it called Fellows. And this space was absolutely perfect. It uh, was this wide open space. It's a creative kind of maker space where people actually rent out space to work on a monthly basis or a weekly basis. So it has little rooms and it has um, access to a big open kitchen area and tables and lounge chairs and those kind of things. Uh, so what's going to follow is pictures of our kids and the actual quotes at the very end. We asked them when they were voting on projects. We also asked them, what are some great things you learned? What is the most important thing you're taking away? So we started our hackathon on a four o'clock on a Friday night and we started registering kids and we charged $20 only because we thought if we charge them a little bit of money, they'd have some skin in the game and be more likely not to just not show up after they've registered. So we limited the number to 50 because we thought, okay, 50 works with the space and also 50 is about what all of us were pretty sure we could handle for our first hackathon. It was going to be an experiment in the making, uh, even though it was a couple of years in the planning. So we held it at this place called down, it, downtown called Fellows and um, the slides that follow you're going to see are slides that um, the kids actually had these things to say about it. So the next slide actually shows um, some Whitworth students. So we have three major college campuses around us. Uh, Whitworth University, um, sorry, Gonzaga University, and Eastern Washington University. And they all participate in this Computer Science Teachers Association. We meet once a month with about 12, 20 of us, and we talk. And actually, we're the ones that planned uh, the hackathon. So you're going to see a picture you saw of Whitworth students that volunteered to stay overnight. We started at four o'clock and we were going to run it until noon the next day and then give awards and parents could come. So Mitch, if you'll ex ex advance the next slide. It shows uh, students. What they did was they went ahead and presented their ideas um, about. So we had students come in and pitch what they wanted to do, what they wanted to make a game about, and it could be anything, right? Anything school appropriate. So we did that, and then we <clears throat> had kids go ahead and sign up for teams on, an, on a project that sounded really interesting to them. So Mitch, if you want to just go ahead and advance the next slide. So what was really interesting to me is I thought we would end up with kids that were going to bring, we told them, bring your laptops, right? Well, instead of laptops, they brought entire computer systems. It was just great. We saw these kids bringing in three or four, right, big, huge computers and screens and uh, recording things. You see a kid right here, I, if it's on the right side, that says camaraderie. Uh, you see Ben there, he's actually putting music to his. And on the other, the other picture shows a bunch of kids um, that were working on a scratch project. So we had kids that came with all kinds of experience. They partnered up and what we did was we had them put, Mitch, if you want to go ahead and advance the slide. Uh, we had them start working together. Some teams knew uh, several of their companions and we had eclectic teams that had never met before. And so we were all over the board. So basically, it started, we had, let me see, we had nine computer science students from Whitworth there. We had the Computer Science Teachers Association. I think at any given time, there were five of us. Um, and at different times during the night, there were different ones of us that came and went. Um, so I stayed there all night. We had another high school teacher stay all night, and, and one of the professors was there most of the night. 
uh, for that consistency piece. So Mitch, if you want to advance the slide. So we had, and this young man in, in, in this slide over on the right in the dark clothes, I hope this is the right slide in the dark hat, he's actually a German exchange student. And my favorite comment through, from him through the night was, as he's walking through the kitchen area, he says, you know, you guys do the most fun stuff in the United States. This is great. So, and he actually, he was, uh, he went to work on a team, but there were many times through the evening I would see him in another team troubleshooting um, and working with other teams to, to problem solve their events. Um, Mitch, if you want to go ahead and advance. So here's a couple kids. This is at the very beginning. Um, they're just messing around and want to take their picture. So Mitch, go ahead and advance to the next slide. So one of the things that we did was we had a funder. We found a funder that said, you know, this would be a really great experience. And I, I want to tell you a little bit about that because when I applied to do this, I convinced my boss, you know, we should do this hackathon and we should um, apply for funding to throw it. And we found a foundation that's really interested in innovative ideas and wanting to um, think outside the box, right? And I, and I loved it because they gave us the money. And when we went to present on what we did with that money to throw this hackathon, uh, it was great. I, I got to talk to a member of the board and he, this is one of my favorite stories. He said to me, you know, Tammy, he said, we, I was sitting there reading your application one evening. I'm on the couch. I'm reading your application. And I thought, this sounds crazy a little bit. And he said, you know, using games to teach, and I'm not really sure what I think about it. And he said, and then I looked over at my three-year-old grandson sitting next to me. He's on an iPad using the iPad to learn math facts. And he said, when I saw him looking down, I looked down and saw him, I thought, you know what, this, this, this is going to work. And so that's really how, how we got funded. And I love that story. And so what we used the funding for was we served pizza. You can imagine teenagers. We had pizza through the night. And one of my other favorite stories is trying to get the pizza guy to leave was hard. He's a 23-year-old young, young man. And he delivered the pizza to our space and he looks around and he goes, what are, you, what are you guys doing? And I said, well, we're doing a hackathon and da da da. And he looks around and he, he takes my business card. He says, I have a younger brother and sister. They're going to love this. You're doing this next year. And then he looks at me and he says, so why didn't you guys do this when I was in high school? Um, so anyway, he was just this amazing person. So we had pizza, we had snacks through the night. We used the money for prizes. Uh, we were going to use the money to find a venue, you know, to pay the venue people, but they volunteered it. We had people volunteering prizes as well and just got a lot of support. Mitch, if you want to go ahead and um, advance the slide, you see this young man um, working through the night on, on their project and doing the coding. Um, and I love that collaborating with teams and having different roles and trusting in our partners. All of those are really great skills. Uh, which is, it was really great to have kids say that that's what they learned because we didn't tell them that that's what we were shooting for, right? We just knew that we were. Uh, so Mitch, if you want to advance the slide. So here's one of the boards. So what we did was to get a feel for where all the kids were in their skill level, we had these whiteboards up and there were five or six of them through the building that were just there. And of course, we had the tear off sticky sheets and we said to kids when you need help with something or you want to learn something put it on this white paper and then we will make sure we get the expertise to you right so what was great was we had so many Whitworth kids come in different shifts and I think in all we had a, I want to say about 15 to 17 but some of them were there at different times but we had about two computer science Whitworth students with every table um, at any given time going over the things that they said they needed to learn. So a kid at a team were in the middle of coding something and then they ran into the next problem. We had an adult there and a way for them to reach out and get adults to them if they needed it. So here are some of the Whitworth students working working with some. If you, Mitch, if you'll just advance the next slide. Um, sitting with them. And what I loved is that we had just as many female Whitworth students as we had males. Mitch, if you want to advance the next slide. This is, 
this was the great thing. So we had a, a guy come in. He's actually a computer science teacher. He teaches advanced computer science at a high school. Uh, his name is Michael. And Mike came in, and one of the things I did was we had bought a bunch of snack food and laid it out all over the table in the kitchen area. And Michael came in. I think he came in, I, I want to say, at about 1 in the morning. And he said, well, I could come at 1 because my family didn't need me from 1 to 6 in the morning. And he came in, and he started... He said, the snacks are driving me crazy. So he started stacking them. He's like, do you mind if I stack them? You know what, Michael, you do whatever makes you happy. So he was stacking them. And my, it was just funny. A kid walked by right after he stacked them. And they go, oh, let's play Jenga. So <laughs> it was just really fun. It was really, really a fun night. And if you want to, Mitch, advance the slides again. So this is us at 4 in the morning because the Whitworth students, I have to tell you, they were amazing. At about 4 in the morning, they said, hey, we need to do this dance. And I'm sorry, I don't remember what they called it, but they said, we need to do this something dance. And I, I remember looking at them and said, you guys are kidding, right? It's 4 in the morning. And, and they're like, no, this is so fun. So the high schoolers must have known the dance because nobody had to teach. I mean, and everybody's out there doing this dance and flailing their arms. So it's some dance that everybody knew. Um, and it was it was just it was great. The energy at four in the morning was great. So Mitch, if you want to advance the slides again, so here you should see eight pieces of paper, and these are the projects that the kids actually did. There were eight groups, and they named them right. They named their game, and then they would put stickies up so that we could keep track of who was doing what, and it was just a great way to communicate. Um, if they needed something or if they did something they really liked. And so we just had all this. This is just what we ended up doing. Mitch, if you want to advance. So here they are presenting. At the very end, all of the kids got in their groups and they presented. And we had a first, second, and third prize. I think it was $100 a kid for the team on the first first place. Second place was 50 Third place was 25 Again, all of that got donated. Um, and then we also had companies that donated swag and that sort of thing. So they got T-shirts and they got some other things. Um, and then we gave out two judges prize, one for the biggest camaraderie and one for the most enthusiasm, right? And then the judge or the, the adults in the building got to pick those two teams. So the kids got up there and they presented what they did. Uh, here's a great one. These are two of the projects. Uh, these are graphics that kids did it all on their own. Uh, this was a this was a cupcake game where sprinkles are shooting at you, and all those graphics were hand done by a ninth grader. She was actually really amazing. Uh, next slide, please, Mitch. And then here's the winning certificate and some of the teams, and they let us take their picture and. Um, so then at about two in the two in the afternoon, we thought it would go till noon, but by the time we did prizes and like when we gave when we set up the poll to do the to do the votes, we also asked them what did you learn the most, what did you get out of it, and would you come back next year? Um and the only kids that aren't coming back next year are the seniors that are graduating. So in a nutshell, that was about twenty three hours of, of our lives right there. So Mitch, if you want to expand to the next slide. And so this is a question. Um, who here has done a, a game jam or a hackathon? And would you be willing to come up and share your experiences in throwing one? No, Garrett, you had no sound. Okay. So, so um, let me try bringing you up one more time, um, and let's 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 see if that works. And then, um, if that doesn't work, we do have another volunteer. Oh, you oh, again? Yeah, okay. So let let let's see if you have sound this time.
Let's see. Can we hear me? Okay, so it's working. Excellent. Um, so you know, I've run a, I've run a hackathon once or twice before. Uh, once actually, I, I won't exaggerate. Um, but I'm actually planning a game jam, and I think you know one of the interesting things about the experience in running a hackathon with is there's so much learning going on. Um, and this is the one thing that just just empowers me and I believe is really the future of learning where we can get kids involved in this process where they learn by teaching others and they learn by collaborating with groups and bringing the skills and experience sets together. Um, and, and there's just this this passionate iterative failure that goes on. Everybody knows you're going to fail. You're never going to come. And in fact, in most cases, from what I've seen is most games don't get completed, but as long as the concept is solid and as long as it gets there and as long as there's collaboration, a lot of these kids, uh, the ones that I've worked with, have come back to me afterwards or come back to our group and our teachers afterwards and said, hey, finish the game finally. And so they actually go together and they work together afterwards after this entire thing is done to get it done. So I think it's absolutely, you know, the comment that I wanted to make is it's absolutely fantastic the way that this approach is starting to get traction and move forward. From what I've seen, it's probably one of the most beneficial and positive ways to teach in the classroom because it's no longer us using didactic method to, you know, push information on students. It's them desperately trying and anxious and passionate about the learning process and the experience of moving their learning forward. Um, it, it's definitely the area I see education having to move to if we're going to get any traction with young kids nowadays. That's all I wanted to say. Awesome. You know, it's interesting. As Garrett was talking, one of the things that really occurred to me is that there are a series of, like, you could call them levels. They could be badges that I'm sure that every team passes through. So you can have things that you can reward the kids for. For example, you know, naming your game is a step in the game. Uh, storyboarding your game is another step in the game. You know, you could have either prizes or badges or some things for all those different steps. Having a prototype, even a non-working prototype, is a step. Having a working prototype that does something, uh, being able to play the game as a manual game is is something. So it seems to me that that you know, even though the kids don't necessarily finish the complete game, well. If you think about game playing, a lot of times you don't finish the whole game anyhow. But what, what you get a lot of psychic reward from saying, oh, I accomplished this in the game, I accomplished that. And we, did you do the same thing with your kids? Are you planning on doing something like that? Or did, how does that sound? You know, as I'm, I'm making notes, and we didn't do that. Um, but what was great is, I mean, so I'm taking notes because that sounds like a fabulous way to motivate kids through, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because you're right, the process wasn't perfect, and one of the things one of the kids commented on was, I didn't realize we could create the game without starting coding. They thought they had to just jump in and code. So when I'm looking at your storyboarding and I'm thinking about even naming the game or even coming up with that idea, um, that, is a, that is a great idea. So no, thank you. And of course, we're throwing one next year, so I'm making notes of all wow. these things. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Nick. Yeah. And and those of you in the audience, as you have ideas that you can throw into the game jam, put them into the chat window so that everybody everybody can see that also. So Tammy, I'll bring myself down and I'll bring your slides back up. It'll come back to the last slide, um, and you you know just tell me what's on the next slide, and I'll make sure that that's the one that's up. Okay. Thanks, Mitch. So. Sorry, I'm having to move my mine around. Um, so, Mitch, on the next slide, you're going to see it should say step one. Um, so, this is our process and how we went about throwing or, or planning our hackathon and how it went and what what happened. So, um, the, my first step was I had a plan in my head, and by the way, almost none of it came to fruition, but I had a plan. And my plan was to bring middle school and high school together during the day, during the week. Um, and then I started having conversations. And actually, Mitch and uh, Matt Farber and some other people got on a phone call with me. 
and started talking me through some ideas and some themes and some ideas. And so I took some notes and then I found some people that I wanted to talk about. So I found some other people to talk about or to because people who have never done one had some really great pointed questions about it. You know, when you're knee deep in something and you understand what you want to do, it's easy to forget that that if you had to explain it to somebody, you should probably add some detail. So we had a timeline and we looked for resources from people that had done one. Uh, we looked at the White House Game Jam and kind of started to model it after that. So step one was just to have a plan, put it on paper, and actually we wrote up what we call the white paper, a one-page paper, so that we could explain it to people, uh, so that we could clarify where we were going, especially our leadership, since nobody in our region had really ever heard of it. So Mitch, if you want to go to step two. So my step two, we, were, we found a venue, right? And actually our venue was Spokane Falls Community College, and one of the ladies that was on the conference calls with with Mitch and Matt and I was a lady who knew somebody out here at Spokane Falls Community College. And so we call, I contacted her and emailed her and said, hey, this is what we're looking to do. Well, she emailed her, the person in charge of facilities and the person that was in charge, the dean, and he met with me. And he, I came out, he showed me the space, we picked a space, we looked for a date, and that was that. The other thing, so we did that. That is, you'll notice that's not where we ended up having our hackathon because later down the road as things progressed, there ended up being uh, some glitches with the space and it didn't lend itself to what we decided to do. Um, but in the meantime, that's where we started. The other thing that we did uh, was I reached out to local universities, again, Gonzaga, Whitworth, Eastern, all have computer science programs in them and local schools because schools are a great space um, but it was really hard because our vision was to have the hackathon happen during the weekday and kids are in schools so that was you know that was a glitch uh, our library systems have been very supportive so i happen to know those the, those people so i sent out an email and they met and said yes you know we can do it a little bit again a little bit of a glitch in that they're open during the day. So, um, but they connected this to people who connected this to people. And of course, our computer science teacher association. Mitch, if you want to move down to step three. So interestingly enough, we had this white paper. We knew what we wanted to do. And we thought we were going to have to pay for space. And we wrote all of our budget in. If we had to pay for people to be there, we didn't know who was going to volunteer what. We decided on prizes and we decided what kind of support we were going to offer, like what kind of equipment we were willing to rent out if the venue didn't have, you know, projectors or document cameras, or are we going to need big sheets of white paper with markers and so kids could storyboard first. Um, so different kinds of materials and different kind of foods. So we landed on six thousand dollars we decided that's what we were going to ask for um so that's when we found some people that run grants and wrote that grant so mitch do you want to go ahead and go to step four the next thing we decided was there's no way we can throw an event and not have enough adults there to help kids and we're going to need different kinds of help we're going to need people there that actually can program. And I'm not one of those people. I mean, I can help to a certain extent. But so we enlisted the computer science students and not necessarily professors. Even though we had professors there, we thought a student to student uh, connection would be more powerful and they would be closer in age and talk the same language. and. So that's what we decided. We enlisted the helps of teachers to do other things like uh, college students aren't necessarily great at managing students. So we needed teachers there that their expertise was, even though we weren't on school time and on school property, we still needed to do some management things, which we ended up doing. Uh, and, and things like uh, in the middle of the night, two of the kids, were having a difference of opinion about what graphics to use. And they had both kind of created something. And so 
you know, we we ended up walking them through, so, you know, sometimes you pick one graphic over another, not because it's better, but because it works better with what your end goal is. So we had administration there and and to enlist help, I would I would ask anybody that is passionate about it. We had parents coming just because they were so excited about it. And so what we did was we signed everybody up for shifts and made sure we had uh, expertise in all of these regions somewhere in the building at any given time. So Mitch, if you want to go to step five. Another thing that we did was we advertised. <clears throat> and advertising in our region is somewhat difficult because we created flyers. But when you email flyers from my organization to all the principals and superintendents, it doesn't always filter down to the people that probably need the information. So one of the things we did was we did a, a media outreach. We released, a, we did a press release. We um, made sure that when we sent emails, we not only sent them to administrators, we sent them through ESDs. We connected with local colleges and universities so that they could connect with their students. So their students, if they knew anybody, you know, um, the education department in our universities like Whitworth and Gonzaga, those kids are working in schools. So it was a one-to-one -one connection. Uh, we put in ads. We, um, it, the Computer Science Teachers Association, that group that meets once a, once a month, they made sure to actually talk to their specific classes the computer science classes, but we also wanted to make sure that we got kids that were not just kids that were interested already in computer science. So we connected with alternative schools and did some phone calling and just did some major outreach so that we knew. In fact, I had a bet with the teacher. I said, I, I'm worried we're going to fill 50 slots. And he said, I think we're going to, I'm worried we're going to turn kids away. And it turned out we had about we we held it at 50 and we got 50 kids to sign up so um it, it just worked out really really well mitch if you want to work to the next slide you know i would love to have you share different ways that you can think to advertise an event um, because i'm used to doing all the things that i normally do and hitting all the people that i know but i would love it if, if you guys want to in the chat box in text box tell me ways that you can think also of advertising because I think that this was the thing I struggled most with so as I mentioned I can't see the responses so I don't know if people are responding but um, I'm, I'm curious to know if there are any local Facebook groups in your area um, or if the, if the PTA has an outreach or the PTAs, there's things like that. You know, we have a Facebook page. Our Spokane Science or our Spokane Computer Science Teachers Association has a Facebook. And I know that the universities do as well. Um, but I didn't I don't think I reached out to all of them and I did not reach out to PTAs, which would have been really, really a great idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then also there, there's often very uh, statewide Twitter groups like there's a you know there's a Kansas Ed Chat you know now you wouldn't do you wouldn't post this during the Kansas Ed Chat but if there's an Oregon Ed, ed Chat or if somebody in Kansas were here that we're that we're doing it they could post it during some some of those yeah you know what those are great ideas and then um, you know, it, it it's weird, but you know, you go to the supermarket and they still have bulletin boards at the beginning, of the openings to, to, to supermarkets, and maybe you know some of those would this, that would be another possible idea. Okay. So I don't know if, if those help. Uh, did you get any yeah. responses? Did pe people list some of the some things in the chat box? Okay, Mitch, I'm not seeing the chat box. Um. Okay. So you have to go to your avatar. Uh, which should be in the lower right hand corner and okay. uh, when you're over your avatar there should be that IM menu is there an IM menu oh, there got it. it's there oh excellent yes we are getting one oh, good okay okay and I'll you know um, so I'll pull myself down also and, and bring your slides back up okay thank okay. you and you and you can respond to those also by te by texting okay thank you
Okay, so again, I'm sorry, I have to move my slides up. So step six, and I don't think I gave this step much thought, but when I created this um, for this presentation, I thought this is really a vital step because so many people were getting so many questions about about what is a hackathon and I one thing I didn't realize I love the learning curve on on doing these things when you're you have never done them before so one of the things that I got a lot of feedback on is what in heaven's name is a hackathon and in fact my own superintendent and I presented to our board at our ESD said what is a hackathon like that sounds like we're teaching kids to break into systems right so um having a central contact person ended up being really really vital because at first we kind of listed a couple names on the flyers and then we realized we needed a person to just answer all the questions that knew the most about it so uh, it ended up being me but i would get i mean i got great calls i got calls from parents that said hey is somebody going to be supervising my kid all overnight i know they're in high school but they're still a kid and one of the great things was, first of all, I could tell them, you know what, I've been fingerprinted by the FBI, I am a teacher. And the other thing I could tell them is, you know what, I have children on my own, so I really do understand what you're saying. And the third thing was, when you drop off your son, please come by and look at the space. Because the space we chose had one door. It, there was one door in and out, and it was in the upstairs of a building and the bathrooms were like right down the hall so there was no way to really lose track of kids we and kids didn't have to tell us hey we're going to the bathroom but we had people kind of right there because it was at the kitchen area you knew when kids left you knew when i mean you, we knew where they were the whole time and we had some parents really concerned about that uh we got calls about hey when you say bring a laptop or a computer should it have unity on it or should it have so different kinds of things came from all from all over the place, right? Uh, the media called and and had questions about what is the hackathon because we want to make sure we're not advertising something that sounds a little bit illegal. Um, we even had people call us and say, hey, you know what? This is so great. Can we make donations um, around? And and we did take donations um, from some organizations because even though we charged the kids twenty dollars, we also knew that we didn't want to keep kids out because of the twenty dollars. So we had made an agreement that we would also use funding to donate and have a scholarship. And any kid that even said, "Hey, you know what? We want to come, but the money might be an issue," you know, we had that handled too. Um, the other thing we did was we were interested in setting up professional development for any teachers that wanted to do a professional development around what a hackathon is or what we expected. And we didn't end up doing any of those, but I think next year when we throw it, I, I think that's something we're going to advertise and work in as well, like really go out and let people know what it is so that there's less confusion. Um, Mick, Mitch, if you want to, thank you, sorry. You know, and I just <laughs> stepped into because um, we did not end up doing the thing we started out to do. We st started out thinking, okay, we're going to have a theme. We're going to have middle school and high schoolers come. We're going to give them some community problem to build their game around. And the more and more we started looking at the logistics of that, uh, the space didn't work for that. Getting kids in our area, transportation is so large for our districts. Um, again, some districts two and a half hours from us. So we decided, you know what, if we do it off school grounds and we do it on our own time, we had a lot less administrative issues. Um, so we can still do it. We had kids signing um, photo, you know, photo forms and medical emergency forms on site when they got to us. So we knew who to call in case there was issues. So you're still dealing with kids and we still, we, and at one point my director said, uh, do we have a one, one to 15 ratio, which is what most schools require. And we actually almost had a one to two ratio. At, so we had one adult for every two kids. I mean, we really had quite a few of them. Um, but one of the things I would suggest is you can anticipate what you think the issues are going to be and sometimes you can't. We had two young men that were there 
during the night that really struggled to be away from home. And again, we allowed, obviously they have cell phones, so it's not as big of an issue, but called home, had rides come in, dealt with that. Um, and start small. You know, it was really great through the night. One of my colleagues and I, I mean, I'm already making notes about what I want to do different. And at one point, he and I are sitting there talking. He said, well, I do this different. I do that different. Uh, we got a lot of calls about from middle school teachers saying we want a middle school program. And I said, you know, we can do that. But this time we're just doing high school because logistically it's easier to deal with high school students. Um, and plus, I've stayed overnight with a bunch of middle school students and that will create uh, different problems of their own. So what was really great is we're in the middle of the night. We're making new plans. And the computer science professor out of Gonzaga, he looks at us both and he says, OK, you guys, let me just get through this one, right? So it was just really great to just have the experience, but be flexible. Mitch, if you want to go to step eight. So at the event, these are the things that I would recommend you think about because you're dealing with children. So we said cash only because we were taking money. And and that created a little bit of, you know, a, a next because setting up a bank account when we were trying to do it to take checks or to have credit card registration, it ended up being a major hassle. Uh, so we, again, so we ended up just taking the cash. Photo release forms are really important when you're dealing with children if kids can't sign them. And parents, of course, were there dropping their kids off and we had them sign the photo release. If they wouldn't sign the photo release, and obviously all of ours did, by the way, but if they wouldn't, you have to make sure those kids don't end up in photos. Emergency contact information, obviously vital because if something happens to that kid in the middle of the night. By the way, when we had them register online, we asked for any allergies. So we had no problems with peanut allergies, but that would have really changed the kind of food that we brought in, right? The kind of snacks that you stacked on the table. Uh, allergy information, medical information. Um, and also, just so you know, we did have conflict. We had, you know, kids that got really tired. They are not at their best when they're tired. But but the conflicts weren't huge. They were just really little things. At one point, um, I went over to one little girl and she said, you know what, I think if I took a nap right now, I would feel better. And I don't think this little glitch would be such a big deal. And so, like I said, there were lounge chairs and there were um, couches in the corner of this space, which made it perfect. So she went over and, and laid down and um, it, it was perfect. Uh, I don't think I need to talk again about computer science experts being on hand because that was invaluable. Um, and we had enough of them that could spread out and be with kids. So that, that worked out really well. And right now, why don't you find someone to talk to? And the question is, what are some topics you believe you would like to see as a hackathon topic for students to engage with that students would be really interested in? So you can either uh, pair up with another person, play on somebody else's avatar, and talk to them about topics, which is a great opportunity to, to brainstorm with somebody else because you can try your topic out on them and maybe they can offer you some advice. So that's just click on another person's avatar and get into a conversation. Uh, and the other way to do it is to just type something into the um, into the chat window, and you can comment on, on other people's. So I'm, I'm curious when you when you say topics, isn't isn't a gameathon it, its own topic? What do you mean by topics? You know, gameathon is its own topic. So what I mean by that is we all got together afterwards and said, hey, what are some things you think would be at value added for this experience for kids? So when I say topics, we decided we would actually add some educational, you know, uh, topics so that kids had a something to to shoot for right um so one of the games that won this time had to do with planets and the sprite jumping from gravitational pull of one planet to another and that but we decided we would maybe add a community piece um issue so some different things in our community that we deal with right now is water um, last year it was fires and this year it is water 
we have roads washing out. We have so much rain and snow here right now, and the ground is saturated. And we have, um, seriously, roads, we, we, districts we can't get to. Uh, we've had flash flood warnings for days and days and days on end. And so one of the things that we just are, tr are talking about now for next year is maybe having um, kids plan a game to troubleshoot what you do when you have an excess amount of water coming down or you know what I mean or excessive snow because it piles up on the side or just some different issues that we've all been been handling this year you know a year ago we or yeah it was a year and a half ago I think we had forest fires burning out of control and literally people couldn't breathe and animal I mean it was it was a huge effect um, so we talked about doing something around that community issue too and and ways to solve that as, as a community so you could build a whole hackathon around a particular theme or a series we of could. things if you wanted to yes we could Interesting. so are there things that people are typing in the, the um, topics. Yeah, somebody said, are you talking along the sign of themes? And let me move this up here. Um, um, game development courses, I'm sorry, at the, the university. I'm looking at the time and the Twitter chat begins in three minutes. So right. so maybe I should pull myself down and, and get your next slide up. Okay. Okay. And actually this is my last slide and you guys have been really wonderful. So different things after the event to think about were we all did come together and talk about how we would change things when it was fresh in our mind. We did a press release. Um, to the to the local newspaper we wrote thank you letters uh, we've done presentations so we put together presentations to the city of Spokane to local businesses our ESD asked for one our funders asked us to go do one and actually we did one to state legislators so we went over to talk about computer science and its importance and some different things going on in our region so we were actually invited into a senator's office to talk about the hackathon and and was about and why it's important and how it also feeds into this whole movement around computer science um, so there are things after the event that were really powerful the other thing that we did was we invited uh, the lady who funded us came to the hackathon we invited her into the hackathon which was really powerful because when she came in and she looked around at what kids were doing and, and talked to them as she's walking out the door, um, she said, you know how impressed these kids are and this is? And I said, yeah, it's really fun, isn't it? And she said, well, next year is something, the application is due November 1st, and I hope you're doing round two, and I hope you'll let us work with you. You know, so that was really important and powerful as well. And then, Mitch, if you want to advance it to the next slide. Right, I quickly advanced um, and then I guess uh, brought myself up here. So um, I just, you know, thank you. Um, so was it fun? Was it fun you for you? You know what? It was fun. And I, I my favorite moment, one of my, see, I keep saying it's my favorite moment because it was, kids are just great anyway, but it was really fun when I, I got it to my husband about 4 a.m. and he said, Hey, are you okay? And I said, Well, yeah, why? And he goes, Well, it's 4 a.m. and you're not home. And I said, Hun, I told you I'd be home at 2. And he said, Oh, you meant PM? He said, Are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> and I and I do have to tell you, I was exhausted. I am not young anymore and staying up 24 hours. But you know what? The kids were amazing. Their energy is amazing. They want to tell you what they're doing. doing. They want to show you coding. Um, it was just, it was so fun and so powerful. So, and what did, did you have to do anything to prepare to stay up for 24 hours or you just kind of show up and do you it? You know what? I just, we just showed up and did it. Actually, I worked that day. I worked that day and showed up at the company at 4 p.m. And one of the things I will say is I think I took a 20 minute nap. There were these wonderful little spaces and benches. And at one point I, I did lay down and said, I, I can't keep, like my eyes felt like glass. Um, the other thing I did to prepare for it is let my husband know that when I walked in the door, so he met me at the door. I won't repeat what he said, but he said, you look really rough. <laughs> <I> said, 
I feel really rough. And then I just I just slept that day. And the other thing I would say if I had to prepare, I would clear my calendar for afterwards because it took me Sunday to just kind of hang out and try to, to get my feet underneath me. So that's cool. Well, you know something? We're both about to uh, you know leave here, and we're gonna. I think you're gonna go on the Twitter chat as well, so people can continue the conversation on Twitter. Uh, it's the hashtag uh, games number four Ed. Um, hashtag being the number sign. So uh, hope to see you all on Twitter in about a minute, and then hope to see a lot of you next week, uh, May third, um, when we're gonna be talking about uh, game-based learning using musical games. So Tammy, yeah, thank you. This was this was so much fun. I really, you know, you really had this incredibly well organized. It's great information, um, and it was, it was it was a lot of fun working with you. So, so and you know, when you say be prepared for things that don't work out, can you imagine? I mean, if we could, if you could hear the applause from people, can you imagine doing a presentation not having access to your own slides? Uh, that's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Well, it was fun, Mitch. Thank you so much. And thanks for all your help with our hackathon. Okay. Well, th thank you, Tammy. And and I'll also see you live in um, at uh, Sirius Play Conference. In oh, July. I'll see you then. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. And this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off for Ed Chat Interactive, but I'm about to go up on the Games for Ed Twitter chat. So see you all in a minute. Bye.